Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. I am so excited. David Lagerkrantz, the Swedish author, is here with his sixth book and the final one that he'll write in the Millennium series. You'll remember Girl of the Dragon Tattoo. This is the newest one, The Girl Who Lived Twice. You so got to read this. David <laughs> <laughs> That was great. That was actually, and then I should say in Swedish, Tack så mycket. Tack så mycket. Ja. Väldigt trevligt att vara här. How nice to be here. Yeah. And it's great to have you here at Andersons in Naperville. So oh yes. We are thrilled that you are here because this I'm is thrilled. well, this I think is the last book in the Millennium series, or yes. at least it, at least for, at least for me. For at least your for part, me. I right? mean, I think in one way or another, this girl Lisbeth will live on. Yes. Oh, I yeah. think so. Yes. Probably. <laughs> I think she's just one of those characters that will always live on. Right? Oh, she's too good. Yeah. She sort of belongs to an eternity. Yes, I yes. think you're absolutely right. Yeah. So this is, I, I think this is such an incredible story. Um, you've written so many other things, but to be asked to finish this series, or at least do the next book after Stieg Larsson had, book, had done books one through three before he died. So um, is it going to be hard for you to say goodbye? to Mikhail and say goodbye to <laughs> Lisbeth. And, and now that you've written three of the books yeah. and you've been very involved in, in creating them or, or continuing their characters, it's going yeah, it to yeah, be hard. Yeah, uh, maybe a bit, <laughs> but I can always think of them, return to them. But for me, I've been so full of passion writing this book. And to be honest, I've been scared to death. <laughs> I can <laughs> that imagine. I would, I mean, live right. up to Stig Larsson, yeah. that I would do it as maybe a, at least as near as good as him. But I was afraid if I was going to continue, I would go a little bit on routine. That would be a shame. Right. No, so, I understand. So, that. no, I, yeah. I've done it with passion and now I, I need new challenges. Yeah. So, knowing that, you know, he had done these three books and had originally intended supposedly to do ten books. Yes, yes. Um, is it, was it hard for you to write that first one, knowing what the expectations oh, were oh, of readers yes. who have absolutely adored Elizabeth and, you know, starting with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, but was it, how, how did it feel to sit down and write this, the first book, The Girl in the Spider's Web? Well, well, what can I say? When I got a question, I just screamed, yes, it was such a thing. And I really wanted to write it, but then I sort of understand more deeply what an icon this character is and what an icon Stig Larsson is, was, right. is. Yeah. And then I started to be scared to death. I, I was scared for the critics, of course. I was sure. scared for the readers. And sometimes in my nightmares, I was even scared of Lisbeth Salander, that she would sort of come after me and say, you're not doing me justice, David. I'm cooler than this. So, so no, oh gosh, I was scared. But, but being scared could be a good thing. Right, it's a driving sure. force. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, I have a tough deadline and a scoop. You must deliver. Right. So, so Elizabeth, I was sitting yeah, like this, yeah. Yeah, so Elizabeth Salander was hovering over you. Yeah, yeah, And making sure you did justice to her yes, character. Because <laughs> yes. we know what, the, what she could do if yeah. she wasn't happy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. So as a, as a crime journalist yourself, um, you know, and you've, you, you've been a bio biographer, you've yeah. done biographies of, of a couple of individuals, what excited you about the potential of doing this series originally? I mean, there's many reasons. First of all, there was a challenge. I mean, it's a crazy thing. I couldn't say no to this. But if uh, I started to realize that my whole authorship has been of outsiders, right. uh, you know, outsiders. I, I, I wrote a novel about Alan Turing, who was gay, certainly an outsider. Uh, that the society tried to crush, and the society certainly uh, tried to crush Lisbeth Salander, but instead of getting weaker, she got stronger. So I think I've always been interested in, in people that are unconventional. Yeah, uh, and what happens to them when, when people are different and when they can use it as a sort of a superpower, just being different. So. 
all my biography and novels has been sort of Lisbeth-like characters. Okay. I wrote yeah. about Slatan Ibrahimovic, mm -hmm. who is the greatest sports icon right. in, 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 in Sweden. And he was sort of the same guy from the ghetto, you know, a, a foreigner that, you know, had such a hard time fighting his in yeah. in this middle-class sport. Yeah. So then, she was, I mean, I just immediately felt that I wanted to do it. Right. It's so interesting because, you know, the Alan Turing book got such great reviews here in yeah, the United States yeah, as well. Uh, but the book about, you know, one of the greatest soccer players who ever played the game yeah, and what absolutely. he went through, great reviews about that book. So I, 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 I make that connection totally, that you you love to write about people who are sort of the underdogs. Yes. And, but I, they have incredible talents yes, or yes. perspectives that they yes, can bring I, to I what they do. And yeah. I think being an underdog and being sort of outside uh, could I mean it could be very hard but people you know are coming after you and maybe bullying you but uh, it can be a force if you're outside you see things in a different ways and if you're unconventional I mean there's always the unconventional different people that are actually giving us the new ideas I'm fascinating about that and I'm also fascinating about the resistance they meet right we, we know by, I mean, by research that create, cr creative people meets more aggression than other people because we are threatened by new ideas. We want to stick, you know. <laughs> in the, so I, I'm, I've always been fascinated about the, that kind of character. Yeah, and I think those who are in those positions, yes. like Elizabeth Salander, yeah. you know, when you think about her, um, she is fighting. She's experienced such great injustice that yes. she's, she's, whenever she sees it, she's going to fight against it. Yes. So that's, I think, one of the, the, the highlights of her character for me. So you have written these three books yes. in what? Six, six years? Six years, six yes, years? yes, that's, yes. That's pretty fast for books that have such... I don't know about that. I mean, well, I, I there are writers who, you, who, I mean, just have three months, but yeah. But they have such intricate plots, so yeah, I think yeah. that's pretty a pretty oh, yeah. busy schedule. Oh, thank you. Thank so you. But that's what you do. I mean, I understand immediately that I have to have intricate plots, because that's what Stig Larsson had, many threads coming together. But then always, it's so much crime fiction everywhere, isn't it? I mean, there's books everywhere. We see it on, on the movies and the TV series. So you really had to have your head burning trying to find the idea that's sort of new. I mean, we have seen the serial killers, the pedophiles, I mean, all the horrible people. You have to find something new. Yeah, and that's tricky. So you have to be passionate about that. So your that. publisher, Norstadt, in, yes. in, in Stockholm, well, it was the original publisher of the original books. Yes. So I, what's the, I'd like to know what the process was that they decided on you to carry on this series. And also it had something to do with Stieg Larsson's brother and I think father, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I tried to put a long story short. I, I talked to my agents and I sort of said that maybe I'm a bit of an actor writer. Maybe I'm best when I go into characters that are sort of my opposite. Oh. I've just written this biography of Slatan Ibrahimovic, which, which was actually the, the fastest selling book ever in Sweden, wow. and maybe the most read book in modern times. And, you know, I'm from this, uh, a bit, I should say, snobbish family with my highbrow father, you know, a scholar, writing biography, and Ibrahimovic was, you know, from the ghetto. And, and stepping in his clothes, being him, sort of developed me as a writer. So I, I, I said that, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of writer who loved to go into other characters. And then uh, my agent thought about it, and then she called Eva Yudin, Stig Larsson's publisher, and then one day I got a call and they wanted to meet me. I was then belonging to the competitive publishing house. Oh. So they said, please David, we want to see you, but we don't want you to go into the main entrance. And then they smuggled me down into a basement. And then there were three people there, and the, you know, the city was very solemn. It sounds like a thriller and in yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Huh. and suddenly they asked me, yeah. would you consider writing the fourth book in the Millennium series? That was sort of the thrill of my life, and I screamed, yes! <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things I love about your three books is that we didn't have a lot on Elizabeth's background. No. What made her tick? 
And you did so much in these last two books of really showing us what's inside of her and her past yeah. and what made her the person she is. Yeah, yeah. So I know you had to develop your own style and own yeah, way of yes, telling yes, of her course, story. Yes. So was that hard or was it something you relished? in? No, in I relished that. Yeah. I understand immediately. Uh, she's an amazing character. I mean, just being Lisbon, but she's also amazing as many superheroes that he has this great mythology, the evil father raping, abusing the mother and the police and the social welfare don't do anything. And she understands that she has to grow up too early. And she understands that she has to make justice herself, to take revenge. And that's sort of the moment that created her. I mean, just like when Batman saw her family murder. So I sort of saw as, uh, as my job to deepen that mythology, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, to answer questions that Stig Larsson hadn't time to answer. I mean, why is she such a brilliant hacker? Why does she has a dragon tattoo in her back? So I saw that as my job was thrilled about it to deepen the mythology about this wonderful, wonderful girl. Yeah, wonderful to, to create that backstory. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think it's 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 I think it's wonderful that you have have done that because we had so many questions about her character. Yeah. So you've answered a lot, and you've answered them in a very satisfying way. Oh, you're <laughs> yeah, so kind, yeah. thank you. So, you know, with this series overall has over a hundred million Oh yeah, it's crazy. Print. I mean, in 50, 50 different countries, yeah, it's, been, yeah. it's been sold and, and published. But it's, 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 it's hard to talk about the books without spoilers. <laughs> yeah, that's we, the problem. We, what we can that's the problem. Sometimes you have to spoil a little bit, at least. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. but, but we can say a little bit what, what happens in the end. And then we can also talk about her twin sister, yes, <laughs> which is yes, very yes, interesting. Yes, yes. But um, I love the way you open this book with the the dead body they found, yeah. find, yeah. who uh, ends up being a Sherpa. Yeah. It looks like he looks like a beggar. Yeah. He's a dwarf. Yeah. It, but it's interesting, but he has the telephone number in his pocket of this coat he's wearing. Yes, yes. Of Mikhail Blomqvist. Yeah. Yes, yes. So what a great way to start this, this last No, book. I mean, it's, it's an old dream I've had all my life to sort of connect the bottom of the society to the top. Because this beggar, I mean, he's strange in many ways. He has no fingers and it's warm in Stockholm. We had a very heated summer, but he wears an Arctic jacket. Yeah, and he has been murmuring and saying strange things about the government, the member of the government. But could it really be a connection with this poor beggar, <laughs> with these top guys in the government? So, so and, I, and then I was think I was started. I wanted to connect them, and then I find a way to. Yeah. Well, and, and then, of course, Mikhail comes in and Elizabeth comes in and they, of course, they're partnering. And I've, I've found that their partnership to be so wonderful when you think of some of the best detective partners yes. or, yeah, or partners that go out to solve injustice or, yes, yes. or to find out the right thing. Yes. Uh, you know, you know, not like a Sherlock and Holmes, but a different. No, different no, no, type. no, no, no. Yeah. But it's, it's such an interesting pair that they. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, and I think they have changed a little bit in my books in the beginning. Yeah, as, as the, uh, Michael Blomqvist was the father figure, right. sort of taking care of this young girl. But now I think Michael has the same feeling that I would have uh, in, in front of Lisbeth, you know, inferior right. complex. I mean, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, she's sm so smart, she's so brilliant. Does she like me? Where is she? And also in this book, of course, because we know that uh, 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 Lisbeth Salander has an evil twin sister. And they were sort of born enemies because uh, Lisbeth, of course, chose the side of the mother who was the victim of the rape and, and, and the abuse. But Camilla chose the side of the father, father. and the strength. Yeah. So, and, um, so in the beginning of the book, that's a, I don't think that too much of a spoiler. No, no not too much Lis of a spoiler. Lisbeth Salander decide instead of just waiting for the evil sister to come after her, she would go after the sister. Right. Yeah. But hating somebody is one thing, but hating someone in your own family and really kill them. Will even Lisbeth be capable right. of right. that? And shh. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no telling those secrets. 
You know, one thing that's always fascinated about these books in this series is there the political atmosphere comes yes, into it. Yes, yes. Which is it's, it's a character in itself when you yes, think about yes, it. Yes, yes. And the political thing is talking about that mistrust of government, what's happening, that there's this undercurrent, this evil undercurrent yes. of lawlessness yes, that's yes, happening. It is. Yes. And it's something that I think is, well, it's apparent in every book. Yes, but it is. But it's, it's sort of rooting out that evil within yes, government. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, that was the tradition of Stieg Larsson, yeah, to right. dealing with contemporary right, is right. issues. And here in this book, we have, I mean, the great problems of our time. We have disinformation, organized disinformation, spreading hate, spreading lies. And as we all know, that lies are the beginning of violence. We have certainly seen that here in, in, in the States. So, um, um, and, and the habit of, 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 of uh, certain people in high power to lie all the time and what that does to a society. All right. I, I just think the opening was fantastic. And um, in the spider web, you know, when you, when you talked about in that book, um, there's a great description, and I, I can't remember which book it's in, mm -hmm. but as a Stockholm inspector who describes her, a bit like a fallen angel in yes. paradise, who serves nobody, belongs to nobody, mm -hmm. but who can't stand injustice and is driven to just about anything to fix it. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. It so describes her. Yes, yes, and yes. I remember, yeah. I, I remember that actually from reading James Joyce ah. when I was a kid, and, and, and he was sort of he was in a religious school and the worst of all were the fallen angel, you know, who would do the dead sin of not serving. I will not serve. I do not belong. And we have the Latin, non serviam. Ah, yeah. And I, I just thought oh, that's what she is. I mean, she's on her own. She, she's the girl who doesn't need anyone. Right. And she has her own agenda, and that's, I think, the great thing. If you go back in crime fiction, I mean, girls and ladies, they certainly needed a man to rescue them, you know. But Lisbeth, yeah. she doesn't need anyone, no. and no. she doesn't want to please anyone. Right. So, I mean, she served herself and her own sense of justice. Yeah, yeah. She's so liberating in so yeah, many yeah. ways, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, Camilla. Camillo, yes. Camillo, interesting. Not, yeah. We not too many giveaways here. Yeah. But um, there's a lot about talking about her father yes, and yes. science experiments, so I don't want to give that away right. either. Yeah. But talking about DNA yes. in people, and you think about DNA within a family, yes, and yes. knowing that there's genius yes. in there, but there's also something um, else. Yeah, yes. psychopathic behavior. Yes, yes, right? evilness. 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 It's so interesting. And we know that. that we can do so much with DNA. We can actually go back, I mean, to our, uh, you know, parents, uh, 40,000, uh, what you saw, ancestors, 40,000 years in, 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 in Africa. You can see that things are you're right. passing on. Sure. Yeah. And I was so interested in I was talking to a lot of s scientists. Well, see, that was one of my questions. Yes. About the research you've done for these yeah, books. Yeah. So you must have, Yeah, but I, I, love, I love doing research. Yeah. I mean, I'm an right. old journalist. Right. right. I used to say when you write a, a good journalist, you should use literary techniques mm -hmm. to write good stories. But when you write good crime fiction, you should use journalistic research. Yeah. And I always wanted to teach. I mean, that's the dream of a writer, just not to entertain, to maybe teach something. Maybe they will, people, the reader will be a little bit wiser after they have yeah. read the book. So, so researching for these three books, yeah. is there anything that you found out that was really unusual or what really surprised you in your research? No, but I was, I, want, I don't know how much I shall give away, but the interesting thing, if we go back 40,000 years, there were, you know, we are homo sapiens, aren't we? <laughs> but we, uh, f for a while there were others, there were the Neanderthals, and there were also the Denisovan, Denisovan people. And they lived quite high up, and they have certain genes. But back then, I mean, now we are living in a happy country when people of different ethnic meets and have kids, but then, different arts, uh, what do you call it, species, right, of, species of the human yes, had, right, sure, you know, right. were mating and spreading their genes. And some of us 
Some certain people have genes from the Denisovan that makes them able to live high up in the mountains. And that's sort of fascinating me, yeah, how the genes, you know. Sure. How they mix and yeah, what, mix what comes it. forward to future yes, generations. Yes, yes. Yeah. I want to know about all your experiences as a journalist, yes. writing for um, Express yes, uh, yes, yeah, yes, in, yes. in Sweden. Yes. But um, all that experience writing and writing about true crime, yeah. and then also the biographies you've written, yes, and yes. also the well, the novel about Alan Turing, which was a lot of it was, of course, fact. Yes, yes. Um, how has that influenced your writing in, in, as a novelist in writing these books? Do you think? I mean, every book. I mean, learning is something, but. If you want to uh, write good fiction, I think it's very good to know how it is in reality. Mm. Yeah, right. So I think you do the same research and then you can sort of twist it a bit. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to, to write about, in, in my last book, I actually put, uh, put Elizabeth in prison. And of course, it's fiction, so I can write any f you know, prison that I wanted. Right, yeah. But it gets so much easier if you actually do your research. Right. Go to the prison, talk to the inmates. So I always try to do that because then you also get the details. And it's often the small details that get things to, you know, be alive. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, I know the the girl in the spider's web last yes, year. Yeah. The movie came out yeah, of yeah, your book. Well, yeah. Which, how did you like their adaptation of your book? <clears throat> uh, what, what should I say? Uh, I, for a while, I, I was trying to be polite to Sony Picture, yeah. but but I think they really didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, and I think they just made it to to an action. Th I think they didn't get you know the soul of the book. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm now fighting to give it back to, to the Swedish producer oh. because yeah. you have to know something about Sweden and the Swedish feminism for a start. So uh, I was very disappointed, I have to say. Yeah. Did you like the first three movies with uh, Numi Rapace as uh, Yes, yes. As I'll, Elizabeth yeah. I mean, they have dated now, of course, because yes, they were they long are. ago, but, yeah. but they were fantastic. And I thought Naomi Rapace and even Mara Roney was fantastic. And I must say, I must say, about The Girl and the Spider's Web, even though it was not a good movie, Claire Foy was excellent. I mean, going from the Queen, you know, yeah, she was the Queen, queen. Elizabeth, yes. yeah, and the and Crown, that, yes. And then, I mean, I mean, there was Lisbeth in both names, but otherwise, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I didn't put that yeah. together. Yeah, that's but otherwise, it was quite a yeah, step. Quite yeah, that she was great. Yeah. She is absolutely yeah. fabulous. Yeah. So uh, you know, I've always wondered. You know, there's been this huge trend. It's been going on for quite a while. Scandinavian. Yeah. Thrillers. Yes. Yeah. Why, why do you think? Because you know, everyone thinks of you know, all the Scandinavian countries as peace-loving and all this kind of thing, but then there's this undercurrent of wanting to read something that's quite a thriller and then has a bit of violence and all that sort of thing in it. What do you think? Well, uh, in the beginning, I thought it was sort of an escapism because we were really a, a safe country with, with, with not much uh, crime at all. So it was escapism. And I, I think in, in countries where there is a lot of violence, maybe they want to dream about, you know, romance and happy things. But yeah, then right. after a while, we, we really had this tradition in Scandinavia that crime fiction was used to fight injustice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, in the beginning, if you're talking about English uh, crime fiction, it was entertainment. Yeah. But we had so many, Shrevel and Valen, Henning Mankell, you maybe know them, who actually used crime fiction to fight injustice. And I think that's a, it's a great uh, Scandinavian tradition yeah. that crime fiction should be more than just entertain you for a couple of days. That totally makes sense. Yeah. So I know you studied philosophy and yes. religion, and then yeah. you, you, you got your degree in, in uh, journalism in Utebori. But um, what was your first piece of journalistic writing that you were really proud about? Do you remember what that was? Oh, God, what was that? That was a good question. I, 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 I mean, I, I, I did in the beginning a lot of crime writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I had some, you know, when you have information before anyone else. Oh, yeah. And that's the thrill. I still have it in me, yeah. you know, okay. when you have the scoop. Sure, sure. And when you have the feeling of the scoop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then after a while, I was trying to, to write more literary. And that was something else. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I remember, I mean, now, when we're talking now, I'm just having, 
I was chasing this Bobby Fischer who disappeared. Right. You know, he went crazy. He went absolutely crazy, but he disappeared. I didn't find him. I, I, I knew he was somewhere in Budapest, uh -huh. but it was a great story just looking right. for this man. So, I, yeah, to mention something. So, what are you working on now? Now I'm working on a new series. I will stay in, in the mystery stronger. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. so I have, I think I have a quite a, a great, I'm, I'm playing a little bit uh, uh, with the Sherlock Holmes. I have this brilliant guy, but um, maybe uh, uh, more, what could we say, the, the press, neurotic uh, Sherlock Holmes from the upper class. And then I have a tough girl from, you know, sort of the ghetto who has really been fighting and, and uh, maybe despise his weakness, you know, you know, he's, you know, going into the depression and things. And I always wondering, you know, what happens when people... Sure. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I, yeah, I think I have a quite good story. So I'm, I'm thrilled about this. I just written a contract with my publisher, who is right there, who is right there. Well, promise you'll come back and see I us. Will, I will, I will, okay. I will. Okay, so I, what, what do you hope people will take away from The Girl Who Lived Twice and the two previous novels? I mean, I hope, of course, they will have fun and they will forget about the word, but also that they will understand what disinformation and spreading hate and intolerance actually do to us yeah uh, uh, so I, I think it's it's destroying there are so much forces now in society and, and we now there are organized that wanted to polarize us and and that I think is the tragic thing now that people live in sort of two different realities and you have this for sure here in, in and, 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 and that I hope. I mean, we all belong to other, together. Yes, We must absolutely. start speaking to right. each other. Yeah. We, c we can't demonize people. Because when you start demonize people, then you're close to, to being violent. And that's what is happening now. And people who are actually fighting liberal democracy use it. And we see authoritarianism, dictatorship, you know, uh, getting stronger. So I think that's horrible. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so, a great so, so, so yeah. yeah. So I wanted to, yeah. to be like, you know, end like E.T. The oldest one. Be kind. Right. Yeah. 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 I want to tell that. Yeah. And I like the hand on your jacket. Yes. Yes. So, take and it on from the, the chest. Yeah, Try right. to speak truth. Truth from the truth yes. from the heart. Or yeah. think and understand that the truth is difficult. You think you know the truth because you speak the truth but think a bit is this really the truth or have you any reason to believe what you believe so understand to, to being truthful is complicated it is. it is okay I end these interviews with a it's a little test a quiz yes, you know all the answers because it's basically your life as a reader okay because no oh, oh, no oh, oh maybe okay. I will be embarrassed now <laughs> no you, know? you will not because yeah, okay. you know all the answers okay. you know all the answers already so what was your favorite book as a child uh, mm, I think it actually was, you know, when I was a child, ah, but I think my first adult book actually was Mario Puzo's Godfather, oh. and to be actually embarrassed, you know what, because on, on page 24 I read my first sex scene, you know, Sonny Corleone, so I still, when I pick it up, you know, it's sort of, it, it's sort of, come out this pages that was embarrassing but oh sorry about it but no, no, no. because I my, read my, my father my i read my mother's copy yeah, you, that you, was you, my first yeah, 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 you remember, <laughs> you remember. <laughs> but because my father put all these you know really yeah. high scholar yeah, book right. so i remember that <laughs> okay um what was your favorite book, book when you were in university at university uh, uh when i was in university uh no i i you know uh the latin Borges, when I, I first read his, his short stories, uh, I remember reading them on, on holiday and in, in, in when I was young in Paris and I was, you know, what? So I think that's... Okay. And then we have Swedish author that you don't know that was actually, you know, fantastic reads for me, yeah. And your favorite journalist? Oh, gosh. Uh, 
I mean, I really worship David Remnick at a New Yorker. Oh, okay. He's yeah. such a brilliant yeah. guy and right. he stands for such good values and yeah. he's really okay. fighting, yes. Okay, and your, what is your favorite book that you could not tell enough people they had to read it, would you say? One of your favorites. Yeah, um, I would say, I was, I was reading another book of him. He is an Italian writer writing about Polygon called Tabuki, and he's called Claim Pereira. I think that's the English version of it, and it's such a beautiful book. Okay. And then you just told me a story that someone was getting the first edition of uh, of Great Gatsby. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Someone, and there was actually you said it was printed in just two hundred. Two hundred copies. copies. The first Gatsby. And, yeah. and right. I mean, yeah. this may be conventional to mention it, but what a good book it yeah, is. It is a great book. <laughs> so I've reread it, yes. And you have three children. I appreciate them. Do you remember something you used to love to curl up and read with them when they were little or young? Oh, it's so many books, but, but my daughter now is uh, 25. She's actually uh, doing her PhD in Oxford. I'm very proud. Oh, but wow. so, and when you're 25, you're the Harry Potter generation. And I remember reading her, we were, uh, I think we were at McDonald's or something, and I was reading, and she said, don't stop. So we were absolutely dangerous for the traffic because I was going reading it high, <laughs> you know, aloud <laughs> yeah, to right, her. Yeah, right. So that was a fantastic uh, thing. Wonderful. And something you read recently or something you're reading now that you're really enjoying? Now I'm reading uh, a book I don't know if it's really been released. Uh, it, Laura Prescott, The Secrets We Kept. Yeah. 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 Good uh, it's, it's a brilliant, it's sort of a novel and a spy novel, and it's about Pasternak and his famous novel, Dr. Chivago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A plus perfect score on yeah. that quiz. <laughs> um, David, thank you so much. Or, talk so much. Thank you. Tack så mycket. Yeah, it was a pleasure. What an incredibly fun conversation with David Lagerkrantz about his sixth book in the Millennium series. As you remember, it started with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, an incredible story about Elizabeth Salander, and she gets her answers to know about her past. Fantastic conversation. Thank you for joining me on Authors Revealed. <laughs>